Welcome to the Thriving Tides podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur who loves self-care, you're in the right place. We can't wait to share our experiences with you. <laughs> Cheers. 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 What is it like to be a female in the trades? Mm. Our guest today, Michelle from Clear Build Solutions and the newly launched podcast Outside the Cabinet Box, has been in the industry for over 21 years and over nine years in the manufacturing software space. Implementing cabinet software shouldn't be a struggle, and that's where Michelle comes in with her company Clear Build Solutions. Along with helping businesses, she is also out to give a voice to the skilled trades community with an emphasis on giving a voice to women in trades through the Outside the Cabinet Box podcast. Even though I am not personally in the trades, it makes for a great listen to see different perspectives uh, on industries outside of my own. I have been lucky enough to work with Michelle as her graphics lady for uh, quite a while now, and I always love to see what she gets up to. So welcome to the closet, Michelle, and thank you for bringing us some tasty beverages as well. Yes, you're welcome. It felt right. Colliding tides, thriving tides. <laughs> I mean, sponsorship? Yeah. Right? I don't know. We're not going to argue that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're open. <laughs> we are here. You know where to find us. <laughs> So yeah, welcome to the closet. Thanks, I'm excited to be watching the closet, and I was so excited. And you're like, we could do it at the startup zone. I'm like, no, I want to be in the closet. The full, authentic, thriving tides experience. Yeah. Well, I kind of wonder that once we start hitting like the big times, we have our own outside mm. studio. Some people be like, let's go back to the closet. Go back to the roots. So you can back never sell this house. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it for life. <laughs> so yeah, Michelle, thank you for joining us today in the closet and. Mm -hmm. If you want to just kind of let us know a little bit more about yourself, was there anything that I missed or? No, but when you say 21 plus years, it I like, oh, am I really that old? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I type it, it's like, oh, God, 20 plus years. Mm. Do we really need to go there? No. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I guess we could kind of talk about where ClearBuild came from in my 20 plus years yeah <laughs> we don't have to t get hung up on the 20 i mean yeah, you don't look like you've been in i'm the not giving you long, the I'll dates you that much. <laughs> i'm not giving you the dates you started when you were five but it's <laughs> a bit of a journey yeah so i uh right out of college i was hired to work in a cabinet shop which was not normal mm. for the program so i took the architectural technology program at holland college and most people went into the architectural field but my first job was at a cabinet shop which just sort of sent me down a rabbit hole of cabinet shops which i am totally grateful for because it just created this trajectory of you know learning skills on the machines um, doing drawings and then there's such a lack of training in that specific area, I just got a better job, I got more responsibilities, and it just sort of snowballed from there. And then I got to work for a software company that was a cabinet drawing software. And what that job was really cool is that I got to go into hundreds of different shops. And so instead of being stuck in one shop, and only knowing their ways, I got to learn hundreds of different ways. And mm -hmm. so it gave me a pretty unique background in the field. Hmm. And then I kind of got tired of working for somebody else and decided <laughs> to to take the show on the road. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw a need for helping shops work with their software because that's not generally their first skill set their first skill set is working in the shop not trying to get cabinets and all those things into a software and linking them to the machines and having the machines cut it mm. exactly well I was actually listening to one of your ep new episodes out mm -hmm. lately and you're talking about how some people fight you on well I can just cut it myself mm. right and then you have to be like oh no 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 like a software will actually help you and so I'm sure there's like that communication where you need to really be like, no, this is this is a good thing for software, mm -hmm. and especially in that kind of industry. I wonder, do you ever not get like fights or anything like that? But do you really have to prove your point and to 
you, why software or you do and, and not even just software there's a really big I don't even know what you would call it but where people don't want to let go of mm. how they're used to doing it and mm. so it's almost like they think it's a job security so if you're trying to show them a much quicker way which the owner wants the employee doesn't tend to want it and getting the buy-in to understand that why are you doing that same thing a hundred mm. times it's taking you forever when we could automate it and then you could go do something else much cooler mm. and much more fun and so that's always been a struggle not even just with a new machine landing in the shop floor and the older workers are like oh I can cut it myself much mm. easier <laughs> um and so they don't always believe in it until you start to show them that it makes other areas of their life way easier and they can work on the really fun stuff instead of putting a cabinet box together 400 times a week. <laughs> the same that's one. true. The over same and over and box over, again. over wow. and over <laughs> again. Yeah. But that's kind of cool because I never thought that there is a huge technology aspect to even just the fact mm. that we're, we're talking just about cabinets. There's a whole other technology. So I could see in like their sense, they thought there was that job security a little bit. And there's mm. a fear mindset of, oh, no, this is going to happen. But really, technology still needs to be run by people. Right. So it's just changing that conversation. Right. Yeah. It's automating the easy stuff, the mm -hmm. stuff that anybody could do. Yeah. You know, a shop could teach any one of us to assemble something like an Ikea cabinet. Like <laughs> we're all putting those crazy things together. And getting them to see, let, let's take the mundane stuff. Let's take the stuff that's not skill-based mm -hmm. and automating it. And then you can spend your time working on really cool stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. And do you find the, the resistance to the technology is more the older generation? Or are you seeing that, too, with people that are just coming out of school and, you know, have learned that hands-on without the software is, is it all across the board or is it's, there specific segments? Yeah, it's definitely all across the board in just the mindset of, you know, somebody likes to do something that way. They want to mm -hmm. sit at their desk and, you know, draw that thing that could be done much quicker, but they're just happy to content to just sit there and just do it. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily an age thing. There's a lot of uh, shops that I work with that is older and they're really happy to have the automation mm, because yeah. they see the value in that they can go do something else or they can do their work more efficiently and depending on the size of the shop they can take a Friday afternoon off or mm. you know they're not working on their Saturdays they're not doing double shifts because they can speed those things up mm. so it's definitely all over the board that's cool that's really yeah. cool and are you I know that there's a lot of uh, other businesses that do a lot of what you do, but is there a big like competition when it comes to implementing software or is it kind of a rogue thing that you did going into business by yourself? It's a little bit rogue. <laughs> uh, I definitely, uh, the company that I worked for, still very close with them, still mm -hmm. have a really good working relationship. I still subcontract for them. But what I can do is do a one-on-one -on -one with a client. So I don't have a huge client base and I have it that way for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's because I can take care of them. It's because they can message me and I know their business versus a larger company and they're dealing with higher volume of clients and they don't have that luxury to dedicate somebody to those clients. You have to be a little bit quicker. So you're mm -hmm. not really remembering that client or they have to book a time. So that was really the, I don't know, what do you call it? You're the branding girl. What's what's that that thing? My, the niche. Your or, niche. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is that word? What's that word? It's like your sweet yeah. sauce. Like yeah. the fact that you can provide that value in your mm -hmm. service, that it's not just a very one-off, like here, mm -hmm. there, done. You yeah. actually teach people how to use it too. I think mm -hmm. that's huge. Having Giving the tools for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was a, a big thing is I did not want to be a competitor with that company because the company yeah. I left, I really enjoyed my time mm -hmm. there. It was, you know, nine plus years with those guys. Really cool company. Mm -hmm. uh, they did things differently and they thought differently, but they were getting bigger and going in a direction that didn't feel where 
you know, I knew what I love to do and this was mm. it. This was spending time with clients and I couldn't do that. Mm. You know, I was tied behind their rules. And there's nothing wrong with their rules. It just, I saw a really big need in just spending a lot of time with a client and giving them that time versus I have time in two weeks and it's at one o'clock. Can you wait? You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I've got 15 minutes at that time. 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. You get one question. If we don't solve yeah. it, we'll talk yeah. again in a month. Yeah. It's like going to the doctor's office. You can only ask one thing and then you're out. <laughs> yeah. Which, and, yeah. Which, I mean, means that that company's busy and there's, yeah. there's a need and stuff. But yeah, working a little more one-on-one, which... Mm-hmm. Makes scheduling very hard for myself. So there's been a lot of learning in the year and a half. <laughs> yeah. I'll get you that information next week. Great. Next week comes. I'll get the information next week. Mm. Every <laughs> time we meet up, Michelle, that's I read the story that you always have. And I'm literally. always like, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. People, reply to Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I literally sent an email today. He's like, you shouldn't have told me. I, I had until Monday to get you the information. I was like, well, let me put it this way. First one in wins. And I have somebody that already sent me their backup. So you decide. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to do that, right? Yeah. And being new to business, it can be tough to feel like you're putting those boundaries or, or placing those restrictions of some sort on your clients, right? Because you yeah. just want to be like, no, I can do everything for you. It's all good. But you can't. No. <laughs> yeah. Big learnings there, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. A lot of learning. Mm. I want to go back to you saying, so you were with that software company for roughly nine years and it was just getting to the point where you were realizing, you know, this is an awesome company and you probably could have just stayed there and continued to grow Mm -hmm. and and follow their suit, but you recognized you love that personalized one-on-one touch and whatnot. Did you explore seeing if there was other companies that you could do that with, or did you just know right away, like, I need to create this myself? Like, where did the idea for Clear Build come from? Over the... 20 plus years I've used many <laughs> softwares <laughs> and the, that particular software I was really enjoying and I really knew and I could very easily go could have very easily gone to another software I've probably used like four or five and then working with different clients as they transitioned to the software that we were working with you got a little bit of exposure to to other softwares too so I just really enjoyed that software and I really liked working with it. And I could see, you know, past jobs I would have worked on in other not so good softwares, how they would have worked really well in this one. And it's not perfect by any stretch, but it does do a lot of stuff. And I see a lot of value and I really knew it. Mm. So it would have been a quick transition for me and with subcontracting for the company that I was at, it actually put me in a really unique position to start my business one day and have clients that same day. Mm. Because in the transition, they had given me some big projects Mm. that they just couldn't handle. And that was kind of the goal for what Mm. I was doing is handle their larger projects because I could take that capacity on. Mm. So it was kind of a unique Mm. situation. Growth wise for the business, it was always in the back of my mind that really doesn't matter what software a company has if we're talking about cabinet manufacturing there's a lot of knowledge and skill set that I could probably transition regardless of their software so that is like something that's in the back of my head is if I need to go down that road that I could probably do that quite easily without needing to know the ins and outs of that particular software Mm -hmm. cabinet shops like cabinet shop it's kind of regardless Mm. doesn't really matter the software they're using it's you know you need to get more training and you need to do this it's gonna be the same same issues Mm. yeah yeah you're still navigating how does this fit into your workflow and processes and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and that's probably a lot of the personalized delivery that you give Hmm. that's cool oh my gosh and like What an amazing experience to open your business and have clients right away. (laughs) I know I certainly can't say that. (laughs) And I'm sure many entrepreneurs listening will be like, what? Yeah. Wow. Like, awesome. It was it was Mm. definitely unique and extremely fortunate. And Mm. so for a year and a half, I was kind of like, okay, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the moment when I don't have that luck or I don't have, (laughs) you know, it's going to come. You're going to have the highs and lows in business and we all know that. So I was kind of like 
I'm ready for you. Yeah. When's the other shoe going to drop? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when's it happening? So, yeah, that was definitely a big deciding factor in it as well because mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a hard decision to decide which direction I went in. Mm -hmm. But having paid clients helps. Yeah. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and also, I think it's a really good testament, too, to stay in good standing with past employers, too, because mm. you just you never know, like, if mm. they are busy, they can they have someone that they trust, you know, and maintaining the relationships, I think, is one of those things that isn't talked about a lot with uh, entrepreneurship. Mm. You know, it's you think that when you take the leap, you have to X all the the behind. And I just think that's really really cool that you were able to still have that relationship and it's actually mm -hmm. it's actually a funny story that you mentioned that so my last boss in the company I worked for I had met him previously and it is probably the biggest lesson that I could teach any young person that doesn't even have to be a young person but it's not burning bridges mm -hmm. and so my the person that hired me in my very first job who is on the podcast this week, by the way. <laughs> it's uh, a good episode to listen. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me my first job and I worked for them for probably about a year, had to go on maternity leave, had a baby, and it ended up going to a different company after that was over. And, you know, years later, I went to another company that he was working at. And so we worked together there, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I mean, small PEI, whatever. Yeah. And I left that company and I taught at the college for one year, Blueprint Reading and AutoCAD. And he came in there with a gentleman who trained me on my first machine at one of my older jobs. And he was oh a tech goodness. at the time. Oh, my goodness. So he was a tech at the time. And so I knew who he was because he trained me on my very first machine. So it was really cool. And then not long after, I get a call from him basically poaching me to go work for the, the software company because he was now the owner of that particular company. And so then I worked for him for nine years. <laughs> and so then now I have this my own business, but such a good working relationship with him. And so he started out as a tech and I was like 20 something young as can be. And just keeping that relationship, people mm -hmm. remember if it's really bad, they're going to remember it. Yep. You know, so it all kind of came for a full circle and you can't even use small PEI because that guy was from Quebec. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's not like a PEI story. <laughs> no, it's totally not a PEI story. It sounds like one. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really does. And that's mm. like our industry is kind of small, but not yeah. across mm. Canada. And so all of the techs that work for him worked from home and worked all over Canada. So I had coworkers in Ontario and Alberta and BC. And, and so he just happened to be on the island at that time. Mm -hmm. I took, I worked that job at Holland College for seven months. That's yeah. all the contract was for and mm -hmm. have like right place, right time. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Talk so, about meant to be. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think in addition, like you said, not burning bridges, but to take it that much, that step further of just treat every connection you make as who knows what this could be right just like be yourself and show up and and do your best work and yeah. clearly it's looking like it's paying off for you it did it did all right, <laughs> it did all right. It's all right. It's and it, right. it's not he wasn't even a boss at that time so mm. that's the biggest one too is you yeah. may you may be working with coworkers you don't even like or you don't get along with but you need to learn to just deal with it because you don't know when you're going to come across them yeah later in life Absolutely. In any way. And I mean, really, we should be striving to treat people we with respect be. all the time. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes you get it's that hard. That you're just like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Bite your tongue. Go home and drink in colliding tides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored, but we'll open to sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that in there. <laughs> So what advice would you give to a woman that's thinking of pursuing a uh, position in the skilled trades? Like, is it a really hard industry to get into? Again, I'm, I have no idea. I'm just assuming that because it's, it is a predominantly male industry, is there any, any advice or tip you could give to a young woman or older woman? Yeah. I would definitely say it's getting much, no, 
I'm not going to use the word much. It's getting easier <laughs> okay. as more women are in the industry and the industry is getting more exposure to that skill set. I had a really amazing journey. I didn't have issues that I felt were male, female. Mm -hmm. It was change and new technology mm -hmm. was the struggle. And probably without me even realizing it, a little bit of like, who's this girl coming in? Like, who is she? <laughs> you know? And But I never really felt it. I mean, I, there was a couple... I would definitely say I had a couple experiences where some people treat you like you're fragile and mm. know nothing and and you learn to just sort of manage it. But definitely somebody that wants to go into it, I actually think it's a good thing if you are female and you want to go into the trades because there's two things. Trades are struggling for workers. Yeah. In a big way, regardless yeah. of general. gender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the industry is starting to see the value that women bring mm. to it. And so it's actually an asset, in my opinion, to be a woman in the trades. Mm. You're definitely going to have challenges. I, I do believe that different industries are harder than others. Mm -hmm. We don't have time on this podcast to talk about the welders that I had mm. to teach but <laughs> it's definitely a type. Yeah. Um, well, even on that, uh, when you had Ellie, the apprentice, on her episode, you guys were like, oh, yeah, electrician. And so it was funny it that was... you guys were going into that because I remember Jake, my my husband is was a carpenter and he'd always mm. talk about electricians. So when I was like watching that I, or listening, I was yeah. like, oh, my goodness, that is so funny. <laughs> All of their types. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Ellie is in BC. Yeah. Mm. She's an Australian in BC. And it's the same thing. And so that's on my list of challenges to pick at and just mm. be like, why? Why is that industry that way? I mean, yeah. I have friends that are electricians, and so they're going to be my... Yeah, they're going to be on the <laughs> podcast. They don't know that yet. I can't wait listen to listen. <laughs> but just to, just to kind of figure out, you know, why is that mentality there? Yeah. Um, and welders, too. It's it's a mm. it's a big. My uncle's a welder, so I think I might actually have him on yes. the podcast. And he's not like that at all. He's not like the attitude and um, the personality that I got while I was teaching those guys and three girls. Um, he definitely doesn't have that. Yeah. But people change when they're in a certain atmosphere mm. and with other people. So right. it's something I got to work on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like, too, with the industry, they're used to all like all male. You know what I mean? And like, OK, so my little introduction to the trades, I worked at uh, volunteered because I didn't work at Habitat for Humanity back in Edmonton to, mm -hmm. you know, get my volunteer up. And they had there's only two girls. So it was me and another girl. And they had us cleaning up the whole entire time. And we'd come up and they were starting to do like their male jokes. And they're like, oh, the girls are coming. And I'm like. That's a thing. Right? Mm. Like at this time, it was only 2000. Oh, gosh, it was, when I was still in Edmonton. So 2013. So not that long ago that I kind of was shocked that that was even a thing. Mm. And they weren't even like they were volunteers. Not all of them were in that industry. So I think it's like almost that sense where the the trades is this amalgamation of yeah. boy chat well, locker all, room chat testosterone in one room yeah just all together and it just you know whether you see it at work or volunteering yeah. or even like boys night type right yeah. they just change and that terrifies <laughs> me like i don't i've i already feel awkward in conversations and <laughs> put myself in a testosterone filled conversation mm -hmm. you, you kind of have to have some some female balls to go yeah, into, uh, like, especially, like, in a carpentry mm. position and stuff, too, where it is so, it's very interesting to me. So that's why I'm kind of cool. I like that we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and I do believe it changes. I do believe the industries are different, like, yeah. you know, like I said, with, like, you know, welding and, and whatever. But I also think some of them have, um, I think females can't lift or can't do as much yeah. as they can but I know from working in a shop that repetitive movement regardless of of your strength is not good 
Mm-hmm. And so now there's lots of equipment to lift. Yeah. Um, lift sheets up, lift, you know, heavy objects up that nobody, regardless of, you know, your size or strength should be doing mm-hmm. over the lifetime of your career. So I call bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna say shit on I was going to say, yeah, we're, we allow it. We encourage I had to it. pause for a second. I didn't ask the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go over that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, no, we're drinking on a podcast, so I don't think the Feels rules right. are... Yeah, the rules, the rules are out right. of the windows. <laughs> so I'd love to dive a little bit into your podcast as well, Michelle, while we have you here. I know that a big inspiration of it was to defunct some of the things we were just talking about and highlight how great it is to have women in the trades and and just bring that a little bit more into everybody's lives and understanding. So can you tell us a little bit more about the inspiration, what that looks like and and what you've been doing? Yeah. So when I did go out on my own, I had this big romantic notion Mm -hmm. that I was going to join all the associations and I was going to get to go because as an employee, you don't always get to go to all of the things, yeah. right. all of the yeah, conferences cool. and trainings. And that makes sense. But I did get to go to a bunch of them as an employee. I trained at one. So I got a little bit of the bug. I liked the atmosphere mm-hmm. of it. So for my business to not lose the vision of what's happening in the industry and not just be kind of stuck in my office or a closet (laughs) and not know what was happening, not stay up to date Mm because most shops are too busy themselves to even stay up to date. Mm -hmm. And then just to kind of be around people in my industry that are, you know, way further ahead than I am at that time. But not even with COVID, even pre-COVID, it takes a long time to get anything to happen Mm -hmm. in an industry. And in a more so an association yeah. and it very much their male white male mm. boards yeah. the odd female is on mm. there everyone has their own opinions this is the way we've always done it therefore yeah just the the classic mm. and so I wasn't I was kind of craving the information of you know digging deeper into a lot of stuff and then when COVID came and everything started to move online I got even more excited mm. because then I didn't have to go to BC to attend right events yeah. events were going to come to me but then it still was like meetings after meetings of what topic should we do <laughs> just pick one yeah there's so many <laughs> they're all good just just do it you've got people at your disposal that can speak to them and you've got a captive audience and that's where I kept pushing cuz I do try to participate on boards I think it's really important if you're going to become a member of an association of any kind mm. that you need to give your time in some capacity it doesn't have to be on some major committee but just to just to say you did something you can't complain if you're mm-hmm. not gonna give up some of your time to help absolutely basically and mm-hmm. so I did of course <laughs> got frustrated <laughs> but no I need to be yeah. here mm-hmm. and they were just taking too long and, and I was trying to get them to understand that you now have access to not just the owners that typically come to these things, but all of their employees. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really important. And in some cases, the employees are probably more important than the owners. Way more. Right? Like- Way more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They may not pay the bill, but... Right. They're, yeah. they're taking care of your business. Mm-hmm. So that's when the podcast came in. Mm-hmm. And I thought... I listened to, actually, Amber Mack, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. I totally love. Yeah. And she had said something in one of the last... Uh, webinars I, I heard her on. I don't remember which. So, I mean, there was so many. Startup Zone one that they had? Where she was talking I've about heard podcasts? her twice. I've oh, heard her okay. twice. So it it could have been, <laughs> I don't know. There was a while there where I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I will go to all, all the of things. the things. <laughs> and then the reminder comes up and I'm like, oh, uh, I can't yeah. sit and listen to one. Course or webinar fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Amber Mack had said, um, and it was about signing up for her newsletter and she was, you know, promising it's not spammy, just sign up for it. And she had said, even if nobody read the newsletter, I would still do it because it forces her to always be looking out there for topics and things to put in the newsletter. Mm-hmm. And that really stuck with me in that, well, I'm craving the information. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. If nobody listens, 
And I say that in a few episodes. I will stop saying it. I promise. <laughs> People are listening. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even in the industry. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> right? right. So I will stop saying that only yeah. my mom and my bestie are going to listen to this. Yeah. And I don't even think my mom's listened to it. <laughs> mom. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, that's where it, yeah. the, it came to be. And mm. so far it's, you know, I, I have so many people to pull from and mm. some will be big reaches of begging and pleading to be on it, but I'm saving those for when I get better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of people that I've met over the years that I really wanted to just pick their brains and just have a conversation mm. with. And it's getting really good reviews right now, mm. which I'm pretty excited about. Um a lot of people, a client actually that I just talked to this week said, are you going to put that on Apple Podcasts? I'm like, it is. It's on them all. <laughs> but it's he, everywhere. Yeah, but he said the same thing, that he's he's an employee of the company and him and the owner he said, we both listen to podcasts. We're big podcast people. He's like, there's not very many a better industry. Mm, yeah. It's like, I know. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and if they're out there, yeah. all of my searches could not find you. Right. So you need a better name. Right. Yeah. And that's a cool thing about like your niche too that there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be avid listeners mm -hmm. because if the information is not out there they need to get it from somewhere because they're mm -hmm. like you were saying there's a lot of people that are wanting to learn more mm -hmm. and where do you go to so i think that's really cool that you're you saw the the avenue yeah. and took it. i did mm -hmm. even though all the microphones in the world are all sold out yeah. they're gone, <laughs> they are gone. <laughs> i will have some someday but for now it's it's my trademark. <laughs> but it still works, right? And it's yeah. like, what a great example of not just waiting for everything to be perfect exactly. to start. Yeah. And you probably see that in your business as well mm -hmm. as your podcast. Like sometimes you just have to say, all right, let's do, do this. Yeah. yeah, you just have to do it. And and that was, and of course, I did all the listening and reading and whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them said, just do it because your first are going to suck. <laughs> so just do it. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't like listening to our first few. <laughs> like, ooh, hello. Um, like, 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 like. It's the only way to get better, yeah, though. And exactly. I think we kid ourselves of that. Like, oh, if I just wait a little bit longer, if I just read another book or watch another YouTube, it's going to make me better. But it never actually does. It's always, always, always the practice. How, so what would you say has been your biggest learning with the podcast so far? Oh, that's a bit, that's, I got that one right away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> Coming in strong. Yeah. Don't leave it till the day before you're going to mm. post it. Mm. It's a terrible idea. To edit? It's and, a terrible yeah, idea. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I did that last weekend. <laughs> and then of course your family's home and the dog is running clickety click with the nails and... Yeah, no, don't do not do that. So <laughs> I had a bunch when I first mm -hmm. launched it because I got super excited. I booked a bunch of guests and I had kind of started, you know, in that super excitement, started editing and then trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to edit. And mm -hmm. the first few were like over edited, yeah. like over edited. And then I got real cocky on this one. I was like, I got this. It's no problem. <laughs> got this. But hadn't realized how much time I actually invested in all of the other ones because mm. it was just little Slow bits here and there. Mm. Yeah. Big lesson. Don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Procrastination is not your friend. <laughs> no. No. Because then your posts are wrong mm. and you're in a panic. Mm. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, it's hard to do anything creative when you're, like, feeling that restriction mm. or that, like, oh, there's not enough Looking time or, oh, yeah. my goodness, I got to get this done. And, yeah, yeah. I'm sure and you then, had a million other things you wanted to do on a Sunday. Oh, yeah, my poor husband. I'm like, stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> you can, it doesn't even pick it up, but I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. He's like, upstairs, nowhere to be found. I'm like, you cleared your throat. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I had to start Unacceptable. over. Unacceptable. <laughs> so funny. So be besides the guests that you already have in the in the line, sorry, I can I have uh, some background secrets. <laughs> Just because I helped her with her website, that's yeah. all. Um, what other? Like, we, you said that you wanted to talk to like welders. Is there any other types of trades that you're also looking to possibly interview as well, or? Are you going to be doing solo ones as well? Is it mm, only going to be interview-paced? So far, I don't feel like I have anything worth sharing. 
I'm sure maybe I do. I disagree. I was going to say, <laughs> I like Tip Tuesday on your Instagram, so <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking at. Yeah. <laughs> the screen changes. Um, yeah, solo, maybe eventually. But right now I have way too many people that intrigue me. So mm. for a while it's going to be going to be guest only. And I really did not want the podcast to be female only, yeah. mm. even though I try to find females if I can. But at the same time, I didn't want it to be marketed as a female only because I want the guys to listen. Yes. And I felt that if I kept it female only and very female and feminine, which is um, tomboy so much, it didn't fit me anyway. Yeah. But I was afraid that they wouldn't listen, that mm, they would yeah. look at it and go, oh, it's kind of a girly thing mm. and, and not listen. It doesn't apply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, my clients would have listened because they know that that's not me. But I wanted to make sure that it's a mixture of everything. Mm. And and with that. I want to do a mixture of industries mm. and I really want to try and find ones that are not typical because mm. we've got the classics. We all, we know what those are, but I know for a fact because there's not, you can't go to school to do what I do. Yeah. There's, it just was learned over time and there's no schools that are training it. And so I know that there's so many more cool jobs out there that are in the trade sector that people don't even realize exist. Mm. So that's kind of my goal. Mm. Awesome. That's really cool. So like you're going to get to learn so much as you're doing it too, right? It's yeah. not just here's my old friend and let's talk about this or whatever, but you get to lean on so many, you know, acquaintances or contacts, whatnot, and, and who knows who you might meet along the way. Yeah, and the episode coming up is with Tammy, who is the owner of Charlotte and Mitsubishi. Mm. Oh, who, yeah, she's awesome. She posted on one of the groups, and I was like, female car dealership owner. I was like, yeah, yeah. The only one in Atlantic Canada, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm like, you're. That's what I want, right? Um. So that's kind of the goal is just to find different ones as well as the typical ones. Yes. That's going to be a little bit. Harder if it's not my industry. I know my industry, but I don't know the others. Mm-hmm. And so it's just going to take some, a little bit of digging. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I and getting associations on. So um, I'm going to have, right now, I'm relying on the cabinet ones because that's what I know. Mm. And I have another association coming up. So Chad, the one that we just had, is with an association, even though he's got many years experience in the cabinet world. And so I have another one coming up and she's... I'm not sure what her title is, but basically she runs the association, mm. but I don't believe cabinets are her background. So oh. I'm really curious to chat with her mm. to see how that evolution of her career brought her to that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. Such a neat way to explore and learn um, and share with other people, right? And I think you might end up being surprised at what comes your way, right? Just like keep putting it out there and, and asking for what you want and, and people will start listening and be like, hey, what about me? <laughs> Those posts are coming soon. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Adding the podcast onto your life, which sounds like it's already pretty full, what are you doing to manage your time? And, you know, like you've got your business, the podcast, your family. I know you love working out, things like that too. How are you fitting it all in? Well, it fits. It's not perfect. Just all fits in the cabinet. It just, just happens right. somehow. I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, no, just trying to... I'm really bad at setting rules. Mm. So what I started to do is I decided that Wednesday mornings is when I would book interviews. And not. I'm not going to say it's non-negotiable. Because it is, of course. Mm, time zones, probably. <laughs> right? Time zones and all that stuff. Yeah. But so far, I'm making myself stick to that Wednesday just so it's quicker and easier when I'm booking with somebody and say, hey, do you have, and I can list a bunch of Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Instead of going, well, my calendar's wide open. Mm-hmm. What do you want? And you end up playing that game. Where that way, I just know that that's when we're going to do them. Mm-hmm. I try to do the same thing with clients, but <laughs> it doesn't always work that way. Mondays are terrible, so I try to not book on Mondays. They're usually busy getting the shop ready, 
but I don't do a lot of one-on-ones with my clients. I do a lot more project work where I'm working on my end on their data and then I'm giving it to them, but we still do training sessions and stuff, but not quite as much. Mm. Um, I definitely struggle with the time management. That's my current, clearly with my episode trying to edit it on a Sunday when it launches on a Monday. <laughs> it's poor planning on my part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but that's my mm. my struggles. I'm too easy to say yes, yes, yes. Mm. And it creates havoc in my life. So it's something that I'm working on. Mm. That's completely fair. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take it. Uh, this question just came to me because I'm just curious now. Mm. What are your favorite podcasts? Because you must have listened to podcasts before starting a podcast. I am a massive fan of Armchair Expert, Dak Shepard's podcast. Mm. I have been listening to that faithfully. I took a little bit of a break, but now I'm back again. (laughs) Couldn't stay away. (laughs) Yeah. I really enjoy his because he will have famous people on, but he's not asking the famous people questions. Yeah. He's asking, like, the out there questions, Mm -hmm. and he is brilliant he's way more brilliant than the characters he plays and so I was really surprised with it so I'm a little bit addicted to his and my current one besides this one of course <laughs> is uh, Reba McIntyre just launched mm-hmm. one we were chatting and about I'm that so loving I loving like, her I, I want to know if she's still liking it <laughs> i really like it and her last episode it was titled cancel culture and i it's not what i thought it was going to be mm-hmm. i i in my mind i don't know why i was like oh this is going to be good i'm going to walk the dog and i'm going to listen to this one it was still really good it was just not what i thought i was thinking more in you know we're behind technology so much that we're like just cancel things last minute and i don't know why mm. i thought that was going to be that but it was totally not that mm. yeah. is it like cancel culture like this like the social cancel like the like how you cancel a person out yeah yeah There's you make one wrong or... mistake you're done yeah and you completely okay. cancel them out so that like one was say, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and it was it was really really good yeah. they had um karamo from queer eye on and he had yeah and he had such a great perspective on it Mm. and it really got me thinking so I like the podcasts that really have me thinking differently Mm -hmm. and so right now probably in the last year I've really been seeking out ones where I can learn more about inclusion and privilege and all that stuff so I really 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 enjoyed that Mm, episode because I will be brutally honest and Say if anybody vote if anybody was a Trump supporter, I was like, boom, done, you're out. Yeah. And, but he had such an interesting way of saying like, you know, if you cut somebody off right away, they're never gonna learn. Yeah. If they're mm. not surrounded by you, mm. they're never gonna get better if you just cut them out. And so it was. Anyways. Exactly. Cool. Mm. I'll have to add that one onto my list for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Raven McIntyre. She's like oh, my. I just secret. love her voice. <laughs> She's like my secret obsession. Not, a, not. It's not really not. Not that secret, secret anymore because you just announced it on yeah. driving time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Global. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's gonna know. Yeah. yeah. No. It's definitely not that yeah. secret. I did go to her That's concert cool. in Summerside. So did just you? saying. Amazing. I love it. I love it. So, so cool. Um, those are my current ones. I have a few mm. that I will pick up every once mm. in a while, but those are. Mine. And then I have Red Table Talk is my other one, which is not really in podcast form. I tend to watch that one. Mm-hmm. That's the one with uh, the Smiths. The Smiths, mm-hmm. yeah. It's pretty cool. Do you find that those inspired how you how you talk on your podcast? Like how you interview people? Or I think so. I kind of overdid all the personal development ones. I don't need one more person telling me what I should be doing mm-hmm. yeah. that I'm not going to do like I know the things I needed to do so I started taking a different look I wanted things that were going to make me a better person or more understanding Mm -hmm. in you know in the last whatever years working with all those different shops and spending a lot of time in in Toronto and surrounding areas there's many 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 different cultures Mm -hmm. and I'm always extremely open but you know there's stuff that I've learned over like watching those episodes or listening to those episodes that I'm like oh man did I inadvertently not even realize that I offended somebody like so Mm -hmm. then I was like okay I need to make sure that I'm aware of my Mm -hmm. 
you know, my words and, and my actions. And so that's where mm-hmm. those started to take me just mm-hmm. to make sure, because I deal with a lot of different cultures and, and really wanting to be curious about them, but afraid to offend somebody and never really questioning or asking mm-hmm. yeah. about their culture, mm-hmm. which I think is bad too. Yeah, exactly. We can be, we can be so ignorant to our own privilege, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's a great approach to just yeah. develop and, and broaden your perspective and know where to ask the questions, how to ask the questions, yep. come at it from genuine curiosity rather than ignorance. It's yep. it's a fine line, <laughs> but if you're trusting and willing to be a little bit more vulnerable, then I think yeah. you can achieve a lot of things. Yeah. So that's been my kind of my COVID learning because... Mm. You know, that w- it was a stressful time and I did not need someone to tell me any more that I already Just, knew. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything will be like, fine. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know I need to eat the carrots or the right. broccoli. But yeah. Stop telling me. Sometimes I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of it. in my closet. Yeah. 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 There we go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so true. What types of things, because well, we ask everyone this, um, what does self-care look like? for you like I know I see your workouts and your wads and your personal best that you love to share online you mentioned you know you have a dog so you get out for walks mm-hmm. and whatnot but um beyond the physical activities what are your favorite self-care go-tos those are currently evolving because mm-hmm. I don't know what they are so mm-hmm. I'm trying lots of different things that's really cool because I haven't really found other than my 5.30 wake up time for the 6.30 gym. Yes, it takes me that long <laughs> to wake Fair. up and get ready Fair. and get there. Those are not workouts for the faint of heart either. <laughs> yeah. You want to be awake when you get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm still trying to kind of figure it out. Like, you know, I went through a phase of I'm going to sit in the tub and bubbles and it's, mm. it's not my jam. I'm too restless. Mm. I'm currently listening to Jay Shetty to see if I can maybe learn to meditate a little bit. Mm. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. It's a challenge. <laughs> but I'm um, kind of implementing some of the mm-hmm. stuff that he talks about. And it's, you know, the first thing you see in the morning should not be your phone. Mm-hmm. And he talks about sound and smell and sight were his big things. And so I've sort of tried to incorporate those. Um, it's kind of my current... I'm, I'm trying to figure out my self-care. Mm-hmm. My, my number one is my workouts and yeah. going to the gym I am terrible at it. Like, I am terrible. Yes, there might be a PR on there, but it's still not very good <laughs> compared to, you know, the good ones that yeah. I am not uh, I am not a CrossFitter. Um, but I do the things, and I go, and the community is very cool and yeah. supportive. And, That's awesome. And I don't need to think about what to do. I just show up mm. and just, like, tell me what I'm doing. Yeah. You want me yeah, to run? So Fine. Nice. I don't want to, but yeah, I'll whine I'll every it. time I hate it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but just the the community and mm-hmm. and since COVID, I started going five days a week, which I've never done. I was like mm-hmm. kind of a three time, maybe two time, talk myself out of it. Mm-hmm. But I had heard something. I don't even know where it was. I wouldn't even remember. But it basically said, before you know, you decide to let's say not go, decide how you're going to feel if you don't go. Envision the feeling of what you're going to feel later in the day if you don't go. And I hate it. If mm. I, you know, if I slept in or I decided not to go because I'm like, oh, it's a little, I'm a little sore right now. I'm just not going to go. Yeah. Um, then by noon, I'm like beating myself up because it's like you should have just gone and mm. done a half ass job and you still did more than what you just did right now. And so right. then I'm trying to find the time and obsessing over getting out to walk the dog or maybe go do something else because I do feel better when it's mm-hmm. done. So, mm-hmm. That's really my biggest yeah. mental break right now. Yeah. My husband's not allowed to do it. He's not allowed? No. Why? No. I need my thing. Because if oh, I no, had to, like, like drag yeah. him. Well, he could go do his own, but he can't go with you. Can't go with me. Gotcha. He made, made a comment one That's time, fair. and I was like, no. No, yeah, because then yeah, it means I have to me. wait for you to get up, and then I have to yeah. go to the gym, and then i got to help you when you get there, because you're not going to know. I'm like, no. Yeah. You're, just, you're, like, you're making this too hard. Yeah, the husband free zone. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair, and that's that's important to know, right? Because yeah. you don't want him cramping your style. No, I cramp my style. It's awesome. I'm curious, how did you get into CrossFit? Like, were you did you work out prior to CrossFit and then just went into it and then you loved it? Because 
from what I hear, what I see, CrossFit's like scary. intense and scary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it definitely <laughs> did not work out pre CrossFit. So I've been going for a few years. I did hot yoga. It was my thing. It was my jam at the time. Loved it, but started to get bored. Mm-hmm. It wasn't challenging. It wasn't. I wasn't loving it like I did previously. One of my um, my son played basketball, and one of the moms, she was like amazing. She just looked amazing, and she was amazing. It probably took me two years before I actually decided to try it. Okay, I'm like, well, if I look half as good as she does at her age, like I am in. I will do. I will drink the Kool Aid. Whatever you want me to do. <laughs> So when I went in, it was not what I thought it was. So CrossFit has a really bad reputation, has a bad rap Mm -hmm. for being extreme and ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, there are people out there that can be a little bit extreme and ridiculous. And I think, you know, I've only gone to the same, the one gym, but I know that there's other gyms out there that can be a little bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But when I went, you know, I can be working out beside someone who's been doing it for years and they're as fit as frig as fit as a fiddle <laughs> like didn't know that's what an ab looked like <laughs> and you're like you're you've scaled yours and they're doing their thing and not one person makes you feel bad not mm-hmm. one person that's is incredible. like michelle that's awesome. you could have ran faster yeah. <laughs> you could have like yeah. put more weight on that there's not one person that tells you that and then you know they're you know they they just make you feel like you're meant to be there. Mm. That's cool. And it's a really big age range mm. um, that goes to the gym, all different ages and all different skills and all different looks and shapes and sizes. And that's what I that's what I liked about it when mm. I went. So I tell anybody that wants to go, you have to go twice. Okay. Mm. You can't just go the once and judge it. You got to go the second time. <laughs> and possibly a third. Possibly a third before <laughs> you officially make the decision. Yeah. But yeah. Hmm. That that's what I like about, it. and I like the fact that I don't have to think about what I'm doing. Yes, yeah, because of key. Especially I would six thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I that's not my personality to go to a gym and sit on a piece of equipment and do mm-hmm. you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would be so bored. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good to know that about yourself. So this is just because I know you, and we've talked about this a couple times, but a really cool not everyday self care thing that you did recently, I think you definitely should talk about because it definitely inspired me and I've been now looking at Airbnbs for my own little self-care weekend. So if you want to kind of chat about that, I would love to know A, how it went and B, why'd you decide to do it? Yeah, so normally I travel a lot. So most of my clients are not even, I have one in PEI. So Mm. most of them are away. And so I do travel a lot, always have. And I didn't realize how much I enjoyed that little bit of a way Mm. just from the family, even though I was, you know, working during the day and then I come back to my hotel room. But it was just not worrying about anybody else's feelings. Mm. Wasn't worrying about what anybody else wanted to eat. If I wanted to eat nachos and salsa, well, guess what? Michelle ate nachos and salsa. And just going to be Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Like no chores or anything too. Right. Like there's no laundry or cleaning the house or. No. And, and I didn't realize how like quiet a sleeper I was because I get out of bed and I just go floop and I flip the blankets back. I'm like, look, the bed's made. Like nobody even needs to come in here. (laughs) So I I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't realize how much I really enjoyed that time away Mm -hmm. and it gives you a different perspective because you're away for the week. It's kind of busy. You know, I still got my workouts in. Got to try some like I always like to go find local coffee shops and good food when I do go because sometimes you're eating Tim Hortons for lunch because you don't have a choice. So my suppers mm-hmm. I try and make really good. Mm-hmm. And so I really miss that. So then I started thinking I need in a way like just me. Yeah. So my husband took a little offense to it. <laughs> He's like, you mean I can't go? No CrossFit. I know. (laughs) I know. I'm so mean. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. But so it took a little bit for him to warm up. It didn't take that long for him to warm up. Mm -hmm. He did understand once I explained it. Right. I was like, I just need to not worry about anybody else's feelings Mm -hmm. is really what I (laughs) craved. So I ended up booking an Airbnb that turned out to be amazing. And it is super expensive every other time of the year, but COVID pricing, it was like, sweet. Mm -hmm. 
And I ended up, it ended up working out that, so I had to give it for four days because there was a minimum and it worked out to be on my bestie's 50th. And so I did, we did spend two, the first two nights with my besties, which is self-care in itself. Yeah. Let's oh, be real. Girl time. Girl time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that was everything. Yeah. So that was perfect. And then everybody had to kind of go to work mm. when I didn't. And so then I was just there by myself to mm. just get some work done. And so I tried to make myself not do my typical work. Mm-hmm. Tried to not get into that habit of, well, I could just do this at home. What are you doing sitting at a cottage mm. doing the same work? So I tried to take the time to just kind of plan where I, where I wanted to go, kind of reflect mm-hmm. and set some goals. I got really restless, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> as awesome as it was, but the place had a hot tub. And yeah. so it was like amazing. And I did, I did go to the gym in the morning. So I kind of kept that bit of routine because I mm-hmm. like in a weird way going to the gym. And so you know, kept that and went to the gym, then came back in the hot tub. And it was, it was really nice Mm -hmm. and tried to listen to some books while it was kind of working away on stuff. So I highly, highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. I love the balance of like having your besties there for a couple days, but then still getting a few days to yourself too. Like that sounds like the best of both worlds. Originally I was like, are you already chickening out on this solo idea <laughs> <laughs> was my first thought it was like well mm. no like you told yourself because I was like because I mean it was still in PEI so mm. I was like don't fall into your habits don't just work on a client's database don't just you know do the extra things mm. that you don't get to do when you're distracted so at first I was like oh but then I'm like no that's perfect yeah two days with your besties mm-hmm. good food and yeah. drinks amazing yeah and a hot tub can't go wrong. Highly recommend the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hot tub's key for that kind of getaway, mm-hmm. I find. Yeah. Yeah. Necessary. So now I'm trying to see if I can convince my husband, James, to uh, buy me a hot tub for self-care. <laughs> <laughs> Business expense. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take our meetings in Do the some uh, hot tub. accounting there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got to be a way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it has to be a way. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. And to recognize, like, because you're not traveling the way that you used to, no. right? So you're missing it. And how do you bring that back, even if it's not leaving the island? Like, there's still ways to incorporate that. Like, coming here was an adventure. <laughs> it was like, woo! <laughs> going to leave the house after dark. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm gone. <laughs> how long are you going to be? An hour? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Man. Very cool. Is there any other self care practices that you do besides working out and stuff? Or I definitely uh, spend a lot of time walking the dog mm. is a big one, and you know, work. I've always worked from home, so that's not really new for me. But it does become super distracting, like over time. Mm. Like for the first few years, you can really enjoy it, and then after a while. You start seeing the dishes and you start seeing all the things you should have done and you kind of have to retrain yourself a little bit. But I find that if I start to get distracted, you know, I don't wait for like lunchtime. Mm. I just if it's 11 o'clock, if it's 1030, it's like, nope, let's go do our walk now and just Mm. kind of get out. And yeah, so I have Mm -hmm. I've always had shepherds. So. They're really intense. I don't know if you've ever seen one. <laughs> but but they're... she's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've always had them. So she demands the time. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of good because it makes me go out mm-hmm. and do stuff with her. So mm-hmm. it's kind of my... And I don't always put a podcast in. Sometimes I will. And sometimes it's just music. It's mm-hmm. just... Yeah. I just... Because... I find if you get into a really good podcast and it gets your brain thinking and then you're like off on another mm. thing. And sometimes I just don't want to think. I just want to spend that mm-hmm. yeah. 30, 45 yeah. minutes, whatever my mood is that day. Yeah. And just, yeah. And you'd need that. Like if your brain is on work, 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 and yeah. this is your break. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it amazes me sometimes how we think we just need to, like, cram it all in all the time. And it's like, no, pause. 
yeah. listen, like music that you love and you, you're not even realizing it, right? It's probably stimulating your brain, but it's relaxing yeah. it at the same time and you know, throw a little Reebon or something. Yeah, maybe. A little Reebon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have like, I wouldn't even show you my playlist. It's, it's random. So, it's I so love random. that. I it's, love the most random playlist. It's right? like I hear a song. Like, I'm like, ooh, add that. And so yeah. it's all, in all my Spotify likes. Yeah. <laughs> and so you yeah. can almost see like progression the progression of like <laughs> my moods and then it switches yeah. to something else and then yeah. it switches to something else <laughs> so, cool. so random yeah oh, but, yeah. but I, I, I definitely that. my next self-care is to back away from my phone I'm having a really hard time mm. yeah i hear that it's the hardest thing. <laughs> really hard time yeah, yeah i really had mm-hmm. um uh since i stepped up my instagram <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of conversations with clients and they're not in my time zone. Mm. So I struggle Mm. with that a little bit. Right. But my realization this week is I just waited how long for someone to give me information. They can wait a night Mm. for me to respond to them. Yeah, It doesn't have to be real time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's a really bad, bad habit that I've gotten into that I've really struggling to break. Yeah. It's worse than putting down a chocolate bar. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Phone screens are... They're a real yeah. addiction. Well, it's more yeah. it's more mindless than a chocolate bar, right? It's yeah. just a natural thing that we do. And it doesn't realize. end. Like, you yeah. can finish the chocolate bar and then it's gone. But, like, you can keep scrolling <laughs> right. on Instagram yeah. forever. Yeah. And then I put the timer on because I didn't know that existed. Mm. And it is 15 more minutes. It. 15 more minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, I just yeah. need 15 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Please, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, struggle. Well, keep us posted on that because I think that's something... Yeah. everyone I talk to is probably yeah. dealing with. So yeah. It's, and it's, yeah. And I think it's, it's going to be my next kind of step easing myself mm-hmm. into it is setting a time and I'm just gonna, that's just what it's going to be. So I use my phone for my alarm. Mm. And so I'm going to try and transition to an actual alarm clock, old school Ooh. alarm clock, I think. Wow. Although I'm sure there's so some new ones out there. I've got yeah. a Google, whatever yeah. Google home. I'm sure it'll right. it could probably do wake it. me up. Oh yeah. I just haven't. Just gonna <laughs> can't let it, go. Teach it to make your coffee and your breakfast too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care it's that it's, everyone's listening to me. I'm not that. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> like I don't. It doesn't matter. We're not that yeah. interesting here. Oh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. So, for everyone that doesn't know you, where can we find you? You can find me in a couple different places now. Hence the mm. phone and social media. <laughs> ClearBuild Solutions is my consultant software business. You can find me there. You can find the podcast on Outside the Cabinet Box. Not outside of, it's Outside the yeah. Cabinet Box. Yeah, yeah, you don't need those words in there, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop putting them in my website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then just Michelle Hoy, if you want to see mm. lots of dog and cat mm. pictures and the odd terrible workout. <laughs> so hard on yourself yeah, so <laughs> give yourself some credit michelle <laughs> a little bit of credit yeah but... oh that's awesome this has been a lot of fun yeah Thank thanks for, for having me i'm so excited yeah i'm gonna say i feel like i know uh, the whole entire world of the trades industry now right even just a little bit yeah maybe just a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. <laughs> we're getting there we're, we're getting there, there. Yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Michelle. So happy to be in the closet before you get too big and moved out of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gee. (laughs) You could tell people way back when. (laughs) I knew them when we hung out in the closet. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.